Hello everybody, I'm Tyler Edlin, professional artist, illustrator, and instructor. And today it's my pleasure to bring you a full unboxing, review, and demonstration of the XP Pen Artist Pro 12 Series Tablet. The product is brand new and provided by XP Pen. I'm looking forward to trying it out. The first five minutes or so of the video, the audio will be inconsistent as I don't have a professional mic set up upstairs. Uh, so bear with me and let's begin. Hey everyone, it's Tyler Edmund here and we're going to be unboxing the uh, XP Pen uh, tablet. So this time of year I believe they're running a special promotion. It is the holiday bundle. It comes in this box. And yeah, we're going to just open up and check it out and we'll give it a test run. So this is from their uh, artist series. This is the, again, as I said, the 12-inch model and it's a, it's a tablet option for digital artists. So see that just slides up there like that, comes in a protective sleeve, and yeah, this, this is great. It really nice packaging. It's got a soft kind of cushiony backing on this side as well. So there's the tablet itself. It's pretty, it's overall very thin, very nice. It's actually very similar to the old uh, Intuos Wacom models that I used to use. Digging further down into the box, this is kind of what we're seeing. We have a couple different layers. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, charging and uh, hookup options, accessories. There is the, um, the charging dog, the power base here. This is the you know the pen itself. We'll take a look at that in a moment. And I believe the software and uh, starter guides. And so here's the pen. Slides right out of the plastic. There is a rotating. Bit. This is where the extra nibs are underneath the pen itself. So yeah, it's actually quite small. It's nice. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to try it out. So what we see here in this box. I'm assuming it's just a, a few cords and wires. It comes with a cool little, uh, cool little keychain in there. But yeah, nothing overly exciting that we'll talk about now. I believe this is the display option hookup, so yeah, I also have, this is what a, the protective uh, case. Yeah, so this is pretty nice. It's got a, an extra pocket, single zip. I don't know how much, I don't think this actually provides that much cushioning. I wouldn't use it as a, like an armor for the thing, but if you're, I mean, you're going to take this to like a coffee shop or maybe your buddy's house, or maybe you're just moving it around. I think it'll work just fine. Now here's the um, the multifunctional drawing tablet stand. Uh, I believe built for this model, this size model anyway. It's like a nice steel or aluminum. It, it very feels very durable. So that's just going to go down here like so. So it, it has a lot of different points of our articulation. Like it, you hit this button right here, and it can slide and click at many different places depending on the angle you know that you want to draw on and so of course now we will just have the plastic still on this thing for now but yeah I guess that is gonna work and get set up just like so so here's the base and set up what we can do is flip this down it's a little stand for the tablet and then of course you can rest it in there like so so I'm, I'm assuming you can just orient this depending on the hand that you're comfortable at using, and it should be good to go. It's also worth noting some of the extras this did come with. So here is the XP Chihuahua mascot keychain. It does come with a drawing glove. These typically retail for about uh, $10 on Amazon, so it is nice that it came with that. It comes with, a, of course, a cloth and a fun sticker pack. You just can't beat that. All right, so this is how I set up my express keys. I'm a digital painter, come from a painting background, so if you're using this for, for photography or for 3D modeling, your experience may uh, differ. So uh, my general shortcuts, as you uh, saw, I like to you know pan and zoom around the canvas. I have a, you know an undo and an alt and a space bar uh, express uh, set up. Now, uh, what I'm doing here is just adjusting the, the pressure sensitivity of it. This thing 
is immensely more uh, sensitive, has lots of levels, uh, way more than I'm potentially even used to. I grew up, you know, with a, a old uh, you know, Wacom tablet, and that, you know, I only had like 1,200. I think this has several thousand. So it, it is quite nice, and uh, my initial you know, reaction is I, I like how it feels against the surface. I do have to apply a little bit more pressure than I am used to, even with the sensitivity all the way up. And that's fine, it's, it's just a, it's a firm and uh, you know, stable uh, piece of equipment. Uh, I like how I'm able to get a lot of varieties of, of width, of thickness, and of uh, light uh, to dark, thick to thin. Uh, in my initial kind of going with this. So I'm just getting used to kind of uh, getting that nice fluid motion across the screen, but I, I think it, it feels good to, you know, get these initial movements in. I wanted to take a quick moment to highlight one feature that the tablet does not have yet. And that, and that if you can see and notice, a tilt and rotation. It's a nice feature that I do like now that I've used it for a while and it doesn't have it yet and I, I want to say that's definitely not a game changer not by any means or, or, or standards I didn't have this feature for eight years working professionally and I did just fine without it so at this point with you know the drivers are all installed it only took a few minutes to go I'm gonna I drew up this quick little sketch and we're gonna basically paint it in today and give the tablet uh, a much more thorough uh, testing. So uh, I have the workspace set up slightly different than I normally do since I'm using uh, the screen which is uh, 12 inches you know from corner to corner in case you're curious. Now my base of comparison is I'm used to working on a 27 inch tablet. Now I know XP Pen also offers larger models of this but I'm going to uh, you know kind of cr cramp things up a little bit and work a little bit more uh, compactly for this and when I'm illustrating what I like to do is start to block out you know the major shapes of a scene so in my initial phases it it's mostly about using the the selection and the marquee tools and uh, to save those selections out so I can basically start out pretty uh, clean in regards to the the work layout and the brushwork and what that allows me to do is I can I can work pretty uh, fast and it saves time on the back end in regards to cleanup like I'm not constantly cleaning up my edges you know fixing textures I just kinda start a little bit uh, more structured in this regard regardless if it's a character or an environment and I think for this particular demo uh, since I <laughs> am a bit short on time this time of year. Since the holiday is right around the corner, I'm going to do a, a little bit more of a stylized approach. I'm going to show you my reference right here. It's up on screen. So I'm drawing from this uh, image I, I kind of snapshotted from mapcrunch.com. It's a great place to learn and practice uh, scenes and uh, design. And of course, I'm trying out color and light as well. So. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just structuring uh, the foreground, the background, and the midground into various pieces and shapes. Uh, what you're seeing me kind of do here is one thing I noticed about the pen, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot more streamlined than I'm used to in regards to the, the button on it. So I'm finding that I have to, uh, I can't find the buttons on it as well since they don't extrude from the pen so I have to constantly kind of flip and uh, search for the button and that, that was a little frustrating and it, admittedly that there's a little bit of learning curve with all equipment and I'm not quite used to the tablet yet it'll come in time I had to change anything on the on this particular model it would be to have the buttons kind of extrude out from the pen just a bit and even have a bit of a wider thicker grip option. All right, so far so good. Uh, what I'm kind of typically doing at this stage in my uh, painting, and again, I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, CC 2018 for those curious, I'm blocking in all my local values and colors as uh, shapes. So very clear, distinguishable shapes 
with very basic colors that uh, from there basically I can add shadows or light to. They're uh, basically the color of an object when it's not affected by any sort of lighting conditions. And that allows me to just to make a very kind of flexible workflow where I can get darker or lighter as needed. And whether I'm approaching a character, a close-up shot, or a far shot, I generally handle most sort of paintings and illustrations in the same way. I like uh, Photoshop, as I mentioned before. It, it has the most kind of uh, versatility, and it's, it's what I've used for uh, a decade at this point. So I just stick with that for now. So see, when I make a selection, I can fill in uh, the various colors for the cars, and then I can add the smaller details, the smaller shapes on top of them, starting from the larger elements in the scene, like the buildings and the buses, down to the smaller things, like the cars and the individual uh, windows themselves. Now here, I'm just going to uh, kind of switch up angles to get a close up a little bit more of a close up of what I'm actually working on and I think at this point it would be worth mentioning that this particular tablet does not have any kind of Wi-Fi uh, modes enabled you do have to plug it in I think that's pretty standard for most tablets I haven't actually seen one that comes fully Wi-Fi enabled and that's wireless in that regard and secondly it does not come with any package software I was doing uh, some snooping around on like Amazon reviews to see what other people may ask or what their concerns was and people actually had some misconceptions that uh, and they absolutely didn't like the product because it didn't come with ready to go software uh, but again this is pretty standard for a lot of drawing tablets is that you just you, you it's it's a piece of hardware you use you know with uh, whatever kind of computer you have so uh, one of the fun and uh, challenging aspects of an image like this, since it has lots of tall buildings, there's lots of atmospheric perspective going on, which generally means the objects that are going further and further into the distance, they will take on the properties, or the color in this case, of the atmosphere. So I have a bit of a starkier kind of gray, maybe a slight hint of a blue sky. So I'm going to make some of the buildings be a little more bluish gray um, as a result of that. And that will hopefully uh, help me create the illusion of uh, depth in this scene which you know as we know it's a it's a flat two-dimensional uh. also for those wondering the display resolution is 1920 by 1080 again I think that's a pretty common display I, I don't think even my larger ones work much higher than that but it, yeah it, it things look very crisp and very clear on it. I have no kind of complaints or qualms with that. I, I think visually it, it's quite stunning. So just getting uh, some of these windows in, these smaller details, finishing them up, getting a little bit of texture in there with these broad uh, brush strokes. And one thing that I do like to do when I'm working on a smaller uh, surface area, uh, you know, like this, I do hide a lot of the windows so that I can have more space to work on and then you can just kind of I believe it's the F key in Photoshop you can toggle them on and off uh, for full screen mode and that can help uh, if you need more real estate so giving them back up on screen now what I like to do at this stage in a lot of my images is to really express and push the lighting so I uh, most of the time what I'm doing here is slightly darkening the entire image I'm almost blanketing the whole thing in shadow and, you know everything but the sky that is and what I do is mask out where I want the light to be the direct light in this particular scene it's a really fun way to approach it because you can be very flexible with how you light things and I can uh, very easily adjust the shape of that light that's coming into the scene so uh, in Photoshop what I normally do is just adjust the levels I do color adjustments so everything's a bit darker a bit more on the cool side at this stage See, I can go and I can toggle my layer masks and my different channels that I did save for the project, which allows me to get in there like I'm doing now. And I'm, I'm using the uh, poly polygonal uh, selection tool to uh, draw out some shapes that I do want the light to be. So see like this giant shape on the foreground, for example, that's something if I go in and just paint within that mask, it will bring it back up to its original brighter color. 
and that will imply that there is some direct light coming from the scene off into the right. So I'm just selecting everything. It, it takes a little bit of uh, projected vision to do this since it, it, the results aren't immediately uh, apparent. But you gotta have a little faith in it and, and just kind of jump in like I'm doing here. And see, now it just feels like light is is coming through and uh, illuminating the part. So, of course, when I'm doing things like this, I'm considering the shapes. I'm considering how it's going to affect the composition. And in most cases, I actually kind of, in some way, planned to do this ahead of time so I kind of would know uh, the direction, of course, I'm going to take the particular image in. And now what I can do is just glaze in a little bit more of that atmospheric light coming in from behind that building. And again, it's going to express the, the shapes a little bit more by the, uh, by the bus and behind uh, the cab. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just going in to add a few of the smaller details, elements that I not not necessarily overlooked, but I just didn't get to yet, uh, and that's something like a tree. So again, I'm making a little bit of a selection. I'm grabbing my favorite leaf brush and going in and just kind of blocking out the shapes. So again, with this one, I'm kind of going to start light to dark. So I, I put the kind of the, the color in it that is getting hit by light, and I can go back in and hit the, the shadow tones on the back and underside of that tree a little bit uh, you know a little bit easier in this case so see I go through it it takes me since I'm getting used to this tablet a, a couple times like I'm I'm double clicking on things like you're just clicking them twice to, because it, it's uh, not quite as sensitive that I'm used to and that's not any kind of problem with the tablet it's just my own preconceived experience with tablets in general but it works, you know, absolutely fine in in this respect. Now, if you hadn't noticed yet, there is an actual eraser option on the back of this pen, and it's something I general I by habit don't use a lot of the time. You know, even in my typical workflow, I just even though it's very natural to just kind of flip it and use an eraser. Somewhere early on in my career and in my practices, I just always made a, a bad habit, rather, of going to pick the eraser on the actual tool selection. I don't even hit the shortcut key for it. So you can, you know, if you're starting out early, if you're a digital artist and you're, you, you haven't been doing this already for 10 years, build better habits when you start. Use that eraser, flip it over. It works with most uh, drawing software. A couple notable ones over course are the Photoshop, the Manga Studios, the PowerPoints, uh, one called Medbang, and um, you know various Windows Paint options. Now I'm actually getting in here and I forgot to add the little XP Pen dog so I'm drawing him in right above sitting on the bus you know, jamming, having a good time with his little tablet. Now I'll go back at the very end and detail that further, but I just kind of wanted to at least block him in on one layer to get him in to represent. See, so he's just kind of chilling up there. He's a bit big scale-wise. I know that. I'll have to downscale him later. This is a giant dog, but yeah, he's cool. He's going to be hanging out. Of course, some people, if you're not aware, what the glove does, it helps preserve the screen. So if you have greasy or oily hands if you've been working long hours the glove helps preserve and keep this screen relatively uh, smooth and clean I actually hadn't started use the, using them until a bit re you know in the last two years just never really needed them but yeah they definitely do help and they are part of the uh, the winter uh, package that this tablet came in now what I'm doing you know the scene it's mostly blocked out there I'm adding in some additional shadows, touching up the bounce light in the scene, and then I'm going to be going through overhauling the entire scene and, and just adding lots more detail as I have time. But you know, the bulk of the work is is already established. The foundations there, everything is it's kind of reading the way I want, and it's just for a lot of artists, it's like how much detail or how much time do you want to really spend bringing certain elements up. But yeah. The, the hard work is for the most part done. See, like I'm doing things like this where I'm adding little window lines and graphics to different parts of the building or I'm 
darkening some shapes. I'm, I'm just adjusting. I'm just nitpicking it. And that's really that. That's all that's left at this stage in the game. So I've got to, got to turn the dog back on and get his uh, details kind of finalized with the rest of the image. So yeah, I'm just wrapping this up now. It, it's been a fun image, a good test run. I know I time lapsed things a little bit, chopped it up. Now in real time, I would say it took about. Uh, three hours or so I added all these additional details that you really can see now just little touch-ups extra detail on the cars uh, the buildings some sign uh, elements uh, but really it was all there uh, so how do I feel about it I, I like it it's, it's a good product and I think it's about in the, the $250 range uh, it, so in the the tablet market for for screens that are about 12 inches that have full you know screen integration you can't really go wrong with that now I also think it is worth noting it works uh, independently uh, without the screen as well so like if you just want to use it as a drawing surface and a drawing tablet for your uh, desired software it works without the functionality of using the actual onboard screen as well and remember this is for the XP pen uh, it was provided it right now they do have the holiday bundle which comes with the additional case which I believe is normally about 20 bucks the glove the sticker and of course the keychain um, so yeah it's a great package if you if you have any questions leave them below I'll be sure to get back to you but yeah I like it it's a, it's a good product uh, it won't be something that I mainly use because I have a very expensive high-end uh, 27 inch drawing tablet but yeah I'm gonna keep it hooked up it's certainly gonna serve uh, its purpose on my PC uh, that I kind of draw on in my spare time but anyways thank you for watching take care and see you next time thank you for checking out my video you can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing liking or commenting on my videos you can find me on the web on Facebook ArtStation and Instagram those are the social media outlets I utilize I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Master's Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning. And for more info, just send me an email. Also feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun, we do weekly hangouts, there's the challenges, and it's a great place to make friends. Take care.